stream again, yep. and I need my Twitch chat app. Yeah, you should be good in just a second. I'm sure the chat will let you know when you're back. Is my mic back on? It is. All right. I think we're back. Are we back? Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure a key got jammed, like one of the F keys on my keyboard for whatever reason, and it was just like freaking out um, OBS because it like started affecting all my programs. But hey, we're back. Um, so sorry about that. Ready to keep working. Um, as I was saying, oh, and I swapped my cam so that you can see my work a little bit better, I think. And yes, everybody um, thank Jared for, for saving the stream because I certainly don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I made a note of where I need to add seam allowances. This whole seam is going to go away, which I'm going to have to do once it's flat. But that is now, it means nothing to me. Um, <laughs> so the inside of this is one of the last things I wanted to show you. Um, this is the side that I've already worked on. And this is the side that I haven't. So during the mock-up process, one of the things that happens a lot of the time is that you're moving the seams around. Like you can see that I've drawn on under the seam allowance, like the placement of this seam has changed several times while I like sew different versions and then seam rip it and then fit it again and then and mark it again and then I rip it apart. And so um, what happens is that the seam allowance, on this case, ended up growing. Sometimes it shrinks down to nothing, but in this case I have a lot of extra seam allowance. And so one thing that I did before, um, before I rip it apart is on this side, which is the, the half that I'm going to be taking apart, um, I went ahead and marked all of my seam allowances back down to a half inch, which is what I use. You could be using a 5 8 inch half sorry, 5 eighths inch seam allowance or seam allowance of any other size, one centimeter, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, that is, you know, what, it just needs to be standard for you. So in my case, it is, um, it is one half inch. And so I marked everything down to one half inch and um, cut it so that it's like ready to go. Part of my thing is shutting. This is my like extra panel that I added on here. There's just too much fabric. Okay. I think my other one already fell off, but that it doesn't matter. Our tape is there to guide us. Why did I cut slots or slits in the fabric? Oh, Mallow's there with the uh, correct answer is that it helps with the curve to lay it flat. You need to cut it um, if you have a curved seam. So there we go. And that is it. I just made it through my whole checklist for everything I wanted to look at and or mark before um, cutting this apart. So I'm gonna look at it one more time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. All of my seams are done except for this very first one in the front. That's the only one that needs to change. So that's why I made this mark there. Um, but otherwise I'm like ready to go and start seam ripping this bad boy apart. Okay. So that's it. I can't try this on anymore. I'm ready to, to destroy it more or less, but we're going to turn it into a pattern. So, you know, it'll become something else. Um, and so I'm just going to dive right in and start by just straight up cutting down this line on the front, uh, which is so nerve wracking. I've spent my whole, all this time I was like, trying to keep it all nice and neat in one piece and now I'm just straight up cutting it apart. You can't see my scissors yet, but I'm I'm cutting my way up into view. There we go. And so now all I have to do is take it apart and use it as a pattern which in my case, I am going to actually um, transfer it onto patterned paper so that I have a little bit more control and I have um, like a record of what the pattern was in case I ever want to make um, another coat that's in the same shape or like, yeah, start with that. Cool, so that's where that needs to line up. Boom, and there's our first fully liberated piece of this puzzle. Voila, rest in peace mock-up. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you can do it, do it for Katsukon. I appreciate the encouragement. I need this.
I'll move this troublesome keyboard out of the way in case anything else happens with it. And try not to touch that again. Rip and tear, but gently. So I think I'm gonna swap over back to this one. And just work here on my chair because it's probably a little bit easier for you guys to see what's going on, maybe. And hang out with my chat. What's up, guys? People lurking. You start working in a costume shop and you're super excited, says Dakota. That's neat. Congratulations on getting a job in a, in a costume shop or, or at your school or whatever you're doing. Uh... A chew pineapple says they've been using wrapping paper that has a grid on the back as a cheapo pattern paper for the cosplay. So that's actually a pretty cool idea. Um, I bought a giant pack of um, like, you know when you go to the doctor and they have um, like an exam chair or a table that has paper on it? I got like a bunch of rolls of that because it's cheap um, in bulk and it comes in long rolls and um, it's like translucent and thin so it's good for for patterns. So I just bought a ton of that and I shared some with my friends because I just bought a huge box of it um, and I'm still kind of slowly going through it. So all I'm doing right now is just using this seam ripper to take this whole thing apart at the seams um, which is going to make it a nice useful pattern and then I'll have to clean it up and like iron the pieces back out um, before I trace them but that's fine so yeah just hanging out and seam ripping oh hey there Kia butt hi girl Dollar store wrapping paper, yeah, that's probably a good solution. The dollar store wrapping paper, because then you're only paying a big a dollar for those big rolls. And the rolls that I use, like the medical table paper, is a lot thinner because it's only like this wide. All you can get it in different widths, but wrapping paper would be a lot, a lot wider. Drag sauce, trying to find a new D and D group. Um, aren't there like, are you talking about on the internet or are you talking about like in person? Because I'm pretty sure there's like um, websites and forums and places where you can go and just like find an online group to start playing with. Um, Kaibu is asking, what do I prefer to make mock-ups out of? Um, generally muslin, if I'm making something that I know is going to be made out of like a thicker fabric, which in this case is the coat, then I will use something that's thicker than muslin, um, which in this case it's canvas. But realistically, you can use any fabric that um, is similar in the way that it drapes to what you are gonna use for your final. Zelda of Skyloft, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, so yeah, there's not really a limit on what can be used for a mock-up, as long as it is similar enough to your final materials to help you get the right information, like how is it going to fit, how is it going to hang, um, or in cases where if you're making like a bodysuit or something, how would it stretch. Um, so you just need something that resembles the same, um, that has some of the same properties as your, your intended final fabric. Oh, which I still need to get that out and show you guys. Um, this is not going to take the whole stream. I'll probably only be seam ripping here for, I don't know, a little while, 30 minutes maybe. Um, and at that point I have a couple other things to show off, like the fabric and some of the other supplies that came from these streams that you guys got off my wish list, um, that have now become direct contributions to the Zelda costume. Um, but yeah, and then I'll, I'll try to show off the fabric as well at that point. Oh, I see now the, your note, Zelda of Skyloft. How about I give you some of the best encouragement I can, says Zelda of Skyloft when they subscribed. Well, thank you very much. I, that is very much appreciated. How did I first learn to sew? Um, well, when I was like a little kid, my grandmother taught me how to use a sewing machine, which I wasn't like 
a seamstress then or anything. Like I just knew how to like put fabric through the machine and how to do like really basic seams. So I knew how to do that as like a, a kid pretty much. Um, I'm just gonna lay that one down now. Oh, this is a good a time to illustrate this patterning technique as well. Um, so, yes, this is for Katsukan. So I learned how to sew um, as like a kid, but then I started getting more serious about it, like right when I started cosplaying. So when I began cosplaying, I had never made like a shirt or pants or anything. I just had knew how to put fabric through a machine. So all of this, everything I've learned has just been the result of me wanting to get better at cosplay and working hard and going to learn as much as I could from anybody who would teach me. Um, and that's, that's how it went. A good place to get bolts of muslin for cheap, um, just online somewhere, uh, probably. Roll20, yeah, Roll20 is a good place to find an online D&D group. So this is like the bust area seam, and like I said, this whole, this seam is gonna go away. I'm gonna treat this all as one pattern piece in the next version. Um, I think that with this being like the shape that it is, is actually fine. So like it does kind of puckle, pucker up a little bit here, but I can push it flat enough. Um, and I honestly don't need this much definition of the bust. <laughs> um, it's just not really necessary for the way that this fits me. And I feel pretty confident about, um, you know, this being kind of extra material. So I'm not too worried about losing that. I'm just going to lay it flat and treat it all as one piece. Um, there are different ways you can get around it. Like if this were a really severe curve or with like way too much extra fabric and I couldn't really push it flat very uh, efficiently, then you would cut a slit and create a dart. But in my case, it's really mild. I can push it pretty flat. I bet if I ironed that, it probably wouldn't even pucker up very much. So I'm just going to keep that as is um, and treat it all as one piece. Now, I have a, a note here that says that I need to add a seam allowance to this whole piece, which is true, but I don't need to after this point, so I'm also going to mark that. So at this point, I'm just making any notes that I can think of for, for things that I might f forget when I'm um, assembling this or transferring it to the pattern paper. So you can really write down anything on your mock-up that you need to keep in mind. So seam allowance here and no seam allowance. And that's really messy, but I understand what it means and that now there's like a, ba a barrier for where my seam allowance needs to stop. Okay, and now I'm just gonna lay this bad boy gently down on the ground and check back in with comments. There, I dropped my... I draw my seam ripper. My stuff is always going everywhere. MP Lafie is here. Welcome. Uh, what pattern did I use? Ah, uh, heck yes. Jackie, thank you so much for the command hooks. Uh, those are designed, um, those are recommended by Marida, who's another cosplayer. She did a blog post on how to build your own like cosplay sets and stuff, which you should check out if you're interested in doing that. And so she recommended, well, she recommended getting um, the IV and using these little command hooks to put everything together. So Jackie left a note that says, I hope this helps you out. You're my favorite cosplayer. Oh, thank you. And I love your streams and the community. Still hope you come back to Toronto soon. I would love to come back to Toronto. Um, Jared's going to be in Toronto pretty soon. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going with him. But thank you so much, Jackie, um, for contributing to help me put that photo set together and make... Um, some new photography for my Aerith cosplay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pockets Mix, enjoy your dinner. And yes, I'm very excited. This is my big Katsu project for this year. Um, I feel like at this point I'll have a, after this year, I'm going to have a tradition of making a new Zelda every year for Katsu. I've at least done it twice in a row, so next year I feel like I have to be committed. 
Oh, um, someone was asking for my coat pattern. I'm sorry, I'm gonna grab that before I forget. I get way too scatterbrained on my streams. Hey, Hylian Violinist, thank you so much for 100 bits. That is very kind of you. So this is the pattern that I used. This is um, Simplicity 1016 and mm -hmm. Comparing the two, you can see why I was attracted to it. It's about the right length. It has its own cape. Um, it has a center front closure, although I did change the shape of it. So there's a lot of similarities there, which is why I started with this one. I had to do some fitting, some adjustments, um, changing the placement of the seams to add in like this, this stuff. Um, the cape here is a lot like wider and um, swishier, like there's more fabric than this one, so I had to like adjust for that, put some new seams in. And that's basically um, the approach that I took and how I ended up with this mock-up was by um, making all of those adjustments to this pattern here. So this is actually a really, really useful one to start with for a number of different coats. And I like that these shoulder seams on the jacket portion of it are very smooth because it's designed to be under a cape. And so if I had started with a different jacket pattern that didn't have its own cape built in, um, probably would have had a more like structured shoulder area with like a more traditional sleeve and it might have just been like lumpier looking underneath. So I was happy that I um, was able to start with something that so closely met my needs and kind of accounted for the same issues. Um, do I go to Con Bravo? No, I've been to Con Bravo in the past, but I have not been in the last couple of years. Zeldathon, Katsu Crunch, yes, absolutely. If I don't make another Zelda in 2018 this year, then I'll have to at least make one for Katsu Crunch next year. And now my sleeve is separated. Yeah, this is almost, well, I guess it is technically like a raglan style sleeve. So it has like the, the curve of the shoulder built in. That's what I was talking about um, when I said that it was uh, a smooth shoulder design because it's intended to be under a cape so um rather than like uh, a flat shoulder seam that probably would have stood out more um orange crushed is asking are patterns usually required for sewing costumes and such i want to make a pretty simple costume but i have very little sewing knowledge so i'm at a loss where to start no patterns are not required um they're a good place to start if the garment is complex or if you are like um, uncertain like if you're if you're newer at sewing and you think that a pattern is going to like something that where you can uh, follow somebody's instructions my seam allowance is uneven here so I'm gonna mark exactly where my seam is so that I don't mess it up in fact I meant to do this earlier and I just forgot I'm gonna draw a line at least on this back seam, because I moved it around a lot. So this is like my final line on exactly where the seam is going, um, so that I don't accidentally mistake any of my previous attempts at placing the seam for the final one. So yeah, um, you can make your own patterns, you can use clothing, like if you, you can go to a thrift store and find an item of clothing that has similarities to whatever you're trying to make, like um, a dress or a top or pants or whatever, that you can go try them on and know that this fits you in the way that you want it to fit you and has seams in the places where you want there to be seams, and then take that apart and use it as your pattern. Or you can just start going, um, you know, make some flat shapes and stick them on your body and see how they work and make adjustments from there. So no, you do not need to go out and buy a commercial pattern if it's if you're new at sewing or whatever. They can certainly help, um, especially depending on the situation. And in this case, I didn't wanna start draping from scratch just because there was kind of a lot going on here. And um, I also no longer have a really nice dress form because I lost my custom one 
and the flood. So that's one thing that's still on my to-do list for things I need to repurchase, which is a really nice dress form. So, um, you know, I'll get there eventually. All right, I know that I've missed some questions and things, so sorry about that. If I missed your question, you might want to just throw it back in the chat. Oh, hey, Lady Avi says, howdy, lady, saying thank you for uploading my leather streams from last April. Well, thank you. Um, I need to keep uploading the rest of my streams, but I've done a lot of them. Yes, Katsukon is mid-February. It's like right around Valentine's Day. Do I ever modify patterns using pattern paper and just redraw them if it's a simple enough change? Yes, absolutely. Um, you t I tend to refer to those as flat pattern changes is when you're so like you're making changes to something that's on paper or flat um, on fabric instead of putting it together, putting it on your body, making fitting adjustments and stuff like that. Uh, Christo Weave, thank you so much and welcome. You yeah, haven't been to Cascon in years. It's one of my favorites, so. Have I found any suitable trim for the fur yet? No, I haven't. Um, my fabric that came in is like very, very white, which is exactly what I wanted. It's like pure white. So now I know that whatever fur I buy has to be as white as I can find it. So if you guys want some, if you want to help me out, do some homework here on the stream. If anybody wants to search for good sources of fur, fake fur specifically, that's pure snow white. Um, that could help me out for sure. But I need to just sit down. I need to go back to Joann's because they had some options, but none that I was like thrilled enough with to, to just straight up buy. Okay. Oh, cat cosplay is here. Oh, Army of Ancients, thank you. Just got um, the magnetic pickup tool for finding pins. <laughs> That's what I called it. That's not necessarily what it, yeah, it's called a magnetic pickup t tool, but it's really good for um, when you're working in a sewing room, especially one with carpet like mine, um, to be able to just kind of wave that magnetic wand around and pick up all the pins on the ground so that I don't stab myself in the foot. Cat Cosplay is here on the stream saying, watching you rip all the seams make me so happy. All my pattern making is so tiny. My poor carpal tunnel hurts watching. So yes, uh, Cat Cosplay does make cosplay for cats. So check them out if you don't already follow because uh, it's pretty amazing. They're, they're such good little cats. Like just, they must be so obedient to just like stay, get in their costumes and pose. It's so precious, so cute. Yeah, you can find really good, um, oh hey Melinda, Melinda Chan is here. Um, you can find really good sales at Joann's periodically where we'll have them for like five for five dollars or um, one ninety nine a piece, depending on different brands, they run different sales. But if you go at the right time, um, you can definitely get really good deals. I've also found that Etsy is a place where people like to resell older patterns. So I think someone was saying the one they were looking for was out of stock. Um, try Etsy because sometimes people um, are like emptying out their their pattern stashes and trying to get rid of old things that they haven't used and you can find um, brand new or or sometimes used patterns on there for very cheap so I would try looking over there hmm Uh, Maker Geek, it looks like you were stopped from posting a link. Um, that's like a, an automated thing from Nightbot, but if one of our... I don't know if we have a mod tonight. I haven't seen Kitten around yet. <laughs> if you'd like to post a link, I think I can allow you to post a link if that's what you need. Does anyone know if there's a better coat pattern for a Kirito coat? Is this what someone Zelda is looking for here? Zelda Skyloft in the chat has that question, so if anybody has an answer for them, that would be nice. Mm, Joanne does have one Snow White fur, a uh, fancy fashion or something. Now that is helpful. Actually, yeah, I do need a mod. <laughs> 
Scarlet Moth has been knighted. Okay, Scarlet Moth, I trust you. <laughs> oh, Kitten is in Catri stream. Oops. Oh, that's a link for me. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to open this. Oh, that's interesting. Are these just swatches? They look almost like hair, like for um, a hair piece, like a wig. But yes, thank you. So now, um, now Scarlet Moth has the ability to, Miss Scarlet Moth has the ability to enable links if she needs to. I'm not, I don't even remember what the command is for that. I'm so bad at streaming, you guys. Thanks for putting up with me and coming to my streams, even though I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Thank you very much. Yeah, the reason why links are disallowed is because, like, spam bots will show up and join the chat and just instantly start spamming links, and it's like, come on, please don't do that. I just don't want to, like, have links to shady things in the chat, and so that way... If you have to ask to post a link, you know, we always allow it. We'll always let somebody post a link to like their work or whatever they want to talk about. And that's totally fine, but just going through the, the process of like having to ask permission prevents like randoms from just coming in here and spamming and making everything annoying. Femme Ivoire, I'm glad that you found my channel too. Thanks for coming to my stream. Yeah, not just links, prawn links. Yeah, no one wants that. I mean, unless that's, that is what you want, but not on Twitch. My hair is a little bit, a little bit going crazy, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to rip this apart as well. This is my sleeve piece that I saved for last. On the sleeve, I have like an extra inch or so on the interior here. There's gonna be a cuff, so this doesn't need to have like a traditional sleeve hem, but um, I just made sure that I had a little bit of extra, um, Yeah. Spam Zeldas and Ganondorfs. Sorry, Maker Geek. <laughs> I don't know the command. I should probably get better at streaming. I'm texting Jared. I just always text Jared anytime I need anything. I'm like, Jared! I would be nothing without Jared. Let the record reflect. I'm not technologically savvy enough. <laughs> Scarlet Moth's like, okay, I'm gonna figure this out. I appreciate that, thank you. Season one, the first half of Kirito. I don't know of a, I don't know of a pattern for that, to be honest. Yes, okay, Mops Entertainment, I believe is the name. Yes, I think that is correct. It just says permit. Exclamation point, permit, and then the name. All right, I'm gonna remember that and hopefully suck less at streaming. Sorry about that, Maker Geek. I didn't mean to frustrate you or get your comments deleted. Yes, okay, Scarlet Moth and Mops Entertainment. Thank you guys so much for, for figuring that out. There we go. So yeah, I'm almost done with this part, um, which is, you know, boring but necessary stuff of just ripping everything apart. Which, I have this seam ripper, but I also have a fancier seam ripper. Um, it's right here. So this is my Ginger um, seam ripper. It's, yeah, it's like a little, little slide blade. You can just stab somebody with that. So this is like um, a, just a straight up blade as opposed to the tiny little one, um, which is more of a point and it's kind of dull. This is really sharp and it's just like a razor with a handle. And um, it helps things go a lot faster because you just have to kind of stroke it against where the thread is. And it's a good idea to like brace it, like I'm using my, my hand here and I'm just pulling it apart. And that is what is making that thread like spread to, um, 
kind of put it right in the path of that blade so the blade is not slicing through the fabric itself. It's just slicing through the thread. And it works pretty well, as you can see. Army of Ancients is heading out. Oh, hey, and you got, <laughs> got another thing. Wow, Army of Ancients, thank you so much. You're the top donor of the stream. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the uh, the last wishlist item saying, have to leave, enjoy one more wishlist item. And that is a watering can for my Aerith cosplay because she tends to the flowers. And so I wanted to do some photos depicting her tending to the flowers with a watering can. So thank you very much, um, Army of Ancients. Hopefully I'll be able to do that photo shoot soon once the rest of the, um, like kind of the set is in place. It might have to be after KatsuCon just because I'm going full speed ahead on KatsuCon stuff until then. But um, yeah, that is what I am gonna be doing with that stuff. And thank you so much for making that happen. Yes, Maker Geek, you're still in chat. Sorry that your previous comments were removed. And whispered the links to me. Thank you very much, Maker Geek. Um, that should be fine. Uh, MP Lafie is asking, why am I undoing my sleeves? I'm undoing all of it so that this can become a pattern because um, I'm totally done with the mock-up. The mock-up has served all of its purposes, which is helping me figure out the pattern and, and visualize how this costume is going to look once it's complete. So the mock-up is now... Um, it has served its useful purpose, and now I'm cutting it apart into a pattern. And these are the two parts of the sleeve. Yes, thank you very much for whispering the links to me. I'm going to take a look at those. If those are like fur links, I'm going to take a look at that um, after the stream. Oh, here's a part that I forgot to do. Um, when I was putting this together, I sewed it along this line, and then as I was adjusting it, I realized, oh no, I want this sleeve to be a little bit smaller, and so I put another seam here, and I forgot to... Um, cut off the extra seam allowance, so I need to quickly do that before I proceed. Using another tool that, you know, is somewhere in this room for sure. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> I was using it earlier today, and there it is under my rogue keyboard. Okay. So this is my little measuring gauge that I, I think I showed off to you guys before this. I'm gonna go back to this one. Um, and so this is gonna help me to pretty quickly make a, um, a line here. Uh, good evening, Leonovid, welcome. El Langosto, welcome to you as well. Um, Rhinel is asking, are there any books or tutorials that I recommend for advanced sewing techniques? Um, there's one on couture fashion that was really, really good that I read quite a bit of it. It's very, very dense information with information. Like it's, um, you kind of have to slog through it. It's not, it's not quite light reading. Uh, I know that when you search like sewing books, it's one of the top ones to come up on Amazon, because that's where I found it. So there's a Couture Sewing Techniques is I think the name of the book. I would try that one. Otherwise, I haven't learned most of what I know in books. I've just learned from doing and following other cosplayers and, um, you know, any situations where I've been around other seamstresses, just learning from them. Uh, so that's primarily where my sewing knowledge comes from. Yes, I'm so ready for the real thing, and that's what we're going to be doing next. Malo Ninja, enjoy your drawing. Thanks for hanging out with us in the chat. Yes, the, okay, couture sewing techniques. Is ex uh, Scarlet Moth had it in the chat um, as I was saying it, probably. So that's one of my favorite books. Um, definitely check that one out. And if anybody here in our chat room has any additional suggestions for um, Rhinel, was the person who asked, feel free to offer your own ideas for books that include good information on sewing. So I'm just kind of trimming off all of these stray threads because 
this fabric tends to shed. Oh, hello. We have a visitor. Oh, you got a squeak like that? We got a visitor, guys. Everybody say hello to our stream mascot, Aries. Just want a lap to sit on. You don't want to be lifted up and make everyone on the stream look at you. Come on, be a good sport. You gotta help me get them clicks. You gotta pay your rent, cat. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, yes, Aries is a. Uh, likes to come and join our streams and interrupt and make it all about him anytime that he can and he's a good boy and he's a chatty baby and a big fluff everyone's saying hi to you and you don't even know because you're a cat all right aries cam <laughs> while i continue <laughs> cutting yeah, apparently he just wants to hang out. Um, I ordered him a little cat bed that like matches my room a little bit. It's like white and teal, uh, same as I painted things. So I can't wait for that to arrive. It's supposed to get here like tomorrow. Um, Cause he's been hanging out in here a lot and just like going to sleep on the floor and I feel bad for him. He needs a little cat bed for himself. Do I have any advice for adding collars to patterns? Asked Triforce Master 64. Um, a popped collar. Uh, if you have a, a dress form, put your uh, tunic on the dress form and then take some extra fabric. Oh, he's leaving. And then just start draping it. That's how I normally do collars. It, I know that's not like a super detailed explanation. Um, or if you... Um, find a, a collar that's similar from another pattern, you can kind of splice them together and just make sure the measurements of that neck uh, add up. And that's a, a good way of, um, I'm sorry, going through a mock-up is a good way of just figuring out um, how the shapes are working together and make sure that you get your collar to be the, the shape and the size that you need. Spencil's asking, has Aries ever cosplayed? No, Aries has never cosplayed. Aries is not a fan of wearing clothes, and I respect his boundaries, um, so I don't put clothes on him because I know that it would upset him. Um, he's not, he's never like worn sweaters or anything like that. He's occasionally had a harness on in situations that warrant it, and it makes him really upset. So um, that's why Aries doesn't cosplay. But if you want to see cats cosplaying, then just follow cat cosplay because it's beautiful. <laughs> And those cats enjoy it. Apparently they ask to be put into costume. If cat cosplays here still in the chat, then he can uh, tell you more about it. Pay your bills, Aries Bahamut. That's right. Gotta help mama get them clicks. <laughs> He's like playing with my pattern paper over there. I should probably stop him. My tools are pretty, well thank you. Um, I used to have mostly ugly tools, but then my house flooded and then I bought only pretty tools to replace them. <laughs> he is trying to help. Oh, cat cosplay is here. <laughs> and Fox does. Fox likes to cosplay, but he's in it for the treats. So, I think it was Jared who told me that the, the cats, or at least Fox, asks to put in to get into costume because he wants the treats and he knows that he'll get treats if he puts if he gets into cosplay. Is that true? Does he like try to get you to put him in costumes because he knows that the treats are attached to that? <laughs> Where did I get the seam ripper? Um, this one was gifted to me. This one. Um, when I was in college, I worked on a show at my call at my school. It was like um, I was working as like an assistant to the costume designer, and then at the end of the show, um, she gave me this as a present and also something to the other assistant designer or associate designer. Anyway, um, so that's where that one came from. I'm sure that like Joanne would have that 
Orange Crush, thank you for subscribing. Um, so that's where that one came from. And this one was from Amazon, but you can also get it at Joanne. I would assume that that one's probably at Joanne as well. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Cat Cosplay sent me some fur info on Twitter. You guys are doing your homework. Or you're doing my homework, actually. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for helping me find um, good leads on fur. Because I want to check out a couple different styles. And so far, I've been kind of underwhelmed with the things that I've found. So Cat Cosplay is saying that Fox, um, one of the cats, knows that photo shoots equal treats. So when I'm in my crafting studio, he'll hop up on the photo shoot bench and meow at me because he wants treats. That's really cute. That's really cute that they are so calm and professional and, uh, you know, apparently cooperative for your photo shoots and for wearing the costumes themselves. Because you put, like, some crazy stuff on those cats where they have, like, little eyebrow pieces and stuff, like, little fake hair. Um, and they, they always seem to be cooperating. It doesn't look like... They're never, like, halfway out of costume. <laughs> Which is what Aries would be. What a mooch. That's right. Downside to associative training is just always winning cosplay treats. Uh, MP Lafie says, my eight-year-old daughter asked and received her first sewing machine for Christmas. She dreams of being a seamstress designer, but I'm not a skillful streamer myself. What easy project would you suggest? Um, for Heidi and chat. So the question for everybody from MP Lafie is ideas for an eight-year-old um, seamstress. And yeah, uh, first idea from Avi, a circle skirt or a rectangle skirt is a really good idea. A circle skirt. And that'll help teach math skills too. It's a really basic math you know, problem is to find the correct, uh, is to solve, solve for the radius of that circle. And that might be a little bit advanced for an eight year old, but you can find calculators on online that are designed to show you exactly what numbers you need to work with. Um, but that's one of the simplest kinds of sewing projects. Um, you know, depending on what she likes to wear, she could probably find like a cool pattern to make her own skirt and then she can wear it to school and show off her work to her friends, which is, um, you know, definitely a positive motivation for, especially for an eight year old. Um, so that's a good one. Pillows are another really good one or even plush toys. Plush toys are like a little bit more, um, advanced, but depending on what pattern you use, you can find things that are still pretty simple. So I think that, um, that would be a good place to start. I think circle skirt especially is a really good idea. Unless she just doesn't like skirts, in which case, cape. <laughs> oh, okay, cat cosplay is sharing me with me the secrets of putting cats in costumes with the eyebrows I guess is fake hair layered on foam with a pipe cleaner behind it that matches the cat fur so the eyebrows are actually posable with being attached to the wig setup that's really cool so they have like wire in them from the pipe cleaner that's awesome I've always wanted to know all the little all the little cat cosplay tricks I'm sure that you end up doing a lot of things that are similar to what like human cosplayers do for their costumes, but you probably have all kinds of like your own little tricks in your bag for how to make it work for cats, which is pretty awesome. That's an interesting problem solving situation where you're like, okay, I need to make this, but cat sized. <laughs> PJ pants. That's another good one from Melinda Chan in the chat. That was one of my sewing first um, first projects. And Kia Butt also has scrunchies in there as a good good option. Yeah, okay, cool. She loves skirts. Um, take her to Joanne. And they have all different kinds of fabrics, of course. I mean, if you have a Joanne by you or a fabric store. But they also have licensed fabric prints that are from different franchises. Like, you can get Legend of Zelda fabric. You can get Star Wars fabric. You can get... 
um, different patterns that are all different themes depending on what she's into, whether it's like video games or, I don't know, hearts and stars, that kind of stuff. It's all, all different tastes and ranges. Um, so you can go and get some patterned fabric that's like a patterned cotton or something like that. Really easy to use, um, a really good fabric to start with. It doesn't require any special knowledge or skills. And um, plus you have all those fun pattern or design options for what the fabric looks like. So that's where, that's what I would do if I were you. Anyway, I hope that, um, I hope that she makes some good progress and makes a cool skirt or I don't know, whatever she ends up doing. I hope that you end up sharing that with us as well because I would love to see uh, a young seamstress in the making. It's pretty exciting. So I'm going to remove the zipper from the front panel. I didn't do that as I was seam ripping everything else. So now it's time. So I had originally sewn this um, zipper to another piece of fabric. I like had it on its own panel and then as I was putting everything together I realized I don't need this on its own panel. I just need it to sit directly underneath um, the front edge. So. As I remove it, I'm going to have some extra fabric in here that I basically just discard. So FYI, that's what's happening there. Oh good, I didn't punch the fabric. That's pretty cool. Cat Cosplay saying they worked on with uh, metal and leather as a steampunk builder before getting into sewing. You know, everybody has their own approach. Um, it's not necessarily backwards, it just kind of depends on what you're into. But that is really cool in the way that um, cosplay kind of uh, encourages people to ha like broaden their skill sets in one direction or another, like whether you start with props or you start with sewing or leather working or whatever, uh, wigs whatever is your jam, um, you kind of end up being a more well-rounded crafter the longer you're cosplaying because you just keep running into different solution or different situations where you have to find new solutions and learn new things and that's one of the things I really love about cosplay um, is how it just encourages you to learn and push yourself. A chibi marble vest. Jackie said their mom made a chibi marble fest vest for their sister. That's pretty cool. Yeah, one of my first projects um, in school was we did uh, pajama pants, and I went to Joanne and found some Star Trek fabric that ha like looks like an old school comic book kind of style. Um, and I thought it was really cool. And we were allowed to bring whatever fabric we needed. We just had to get like. Uh, two yards or something like that of whatever our chosen fabric was. So I went and got like this cool um, licensed print from their like Star Trek Star Wars options and everybody in my class was like what you could do that and I was just like yeah did you not look around the fabric store? <laughs> but a lot of them had it. Yeah, I like Star Trek too. It was the original Star Trek, um, so like Kirk and Spock and all of them. Yeah, it is cheaper to learn on a small scale too. I'm sure that's a benefit of working on cat costumes is you probably never need more than one yard of any given fabric. Yeah, drawstring bag is a good simple starter project, like a dice bag um, or coin purse kind of thing. Yeah. All right, I've almost liberated my zipper. I have to go back and um, take out this other fabric. So this is another example of some pattern changes that I made. I put a dart into the costume. It's like, uh, you can see it on the back here. There's a dart right here and it's almost on the edge. Um, I just kind of placed the dart as I was, as I was fitting it when it was on my body, I just kind of placed it wherever I thought that I needed it. 
and then I ended up putting a seam almost directly next to it. Um, I'm basically just gonna ignore the dart and I'm gonna treat this all as one piece because it lays flat. If I had um, planned it better in advance, I probably would have drawn the dart right on the seam and then I wouldn't have to worry about it at all. It would just disappear. But that's basically what's happening anyway is that it's been ironed flat. It doesn't create any kind of lumps or bumps or anything here. Um, it does affect the angle of this piece, like this is at an angle right there. It's pretty slight, but you can tell. Anyway, so just one thing to be aware of is um, how to make those kinds of changes and what to, uh, what to keep an eye on when you're kind of going from one version of your mock-up to your pattern is that you can take this opportunity to kind of simplify things, combine panels, um, add new seams. It's all a part of the process of making your garment and making it fit you the way that you want. Your first cosplay was Twilight Princess Zelda, says highly in violinist. That's <laughs> that's a big project. I guess if you made it yourself, you don't, you don't have to, but that's a quite an ambitious one to start with. Nerdy Burbs first cosplay was Professor Layton. That's that's a good one. I like Professor Layton a lot. You can get thrift stuff from thrift stores. That's good. Yeah, thrift stores are where like all of my earliest costumes were just like cobbled together from thrift store stuff that was altered or used as a pattern or whatever. Um, Zelda of Skyloft is now asking me, what did I use for my Asuna cosplay? Did I make my own pattern? I've been wanting to make an Asuna cosplay, but don't know where to start. Yeah, on that one, I did make my own pattern from scratch. I had um, a dress form that fit me, or was very, very close and similar to my body. So I just started draping fabric on that. And um, if you want more information about that specifically, go to YouTube and type draping fabric or draping patterns um, and just search for that. And that's gonna be a good keyword for finding more information on how to make your own pattern based on a form, like a physical form, um, like a uh, dress form. So that's, that's what I did for mine and it's a good place to start. Yeah, this is one of my favorite songs on this whole playlist. Everyone's talking about their first cosplays now. Um, Homestuck. Multiple homestucks. Maka from Soul Eater. Chloe from Life is Strange. That's a good one to kind of put together out of probably things you could find at the thrift store or an American Eagle or whatever. What do I do if I hit a crafty art block like 30 seconds into my I want to make video game stuff, mine stuff? Um. I mean, people talk a lot about motivation and inspiration, but realistically what you need is discipline. And it sucks when you're not feeling it or you don't feel like working on something. Um, I've never really had art block um, because if you don't want to work on the thing that you're working on, just work on something else. <laughs> um, but if you have a goal and you have a plan, then you just got to make yourself sit down and do it even when you don't feel like doing it. Um, yeah, and it sucks, especially when you don't want to. Uh, Roxas, Robin from Teen Titans, female cock, uh, character. I thought, almost thought that was Kakarot, but no, that was another homestuck. I don't know what the character names are. Melinda, this is Edward Elric. Yue. Oh, from Avatar, the last uh, airbender. That's, I really like her costume. I would love to cosplay as her, honestly. Three links. What was my first cosplay? I like, I name various ones because I started cosplaying so slowly and I like kind of built my way up. So sometimes I'm like, oh, it was this one or, I think technically the first one that I like wore that was complete was Miss Aubrey from Dance Central. Cause she has red hair and mine was like a similar length at the time. So I was like, sweet, no wig. 
which is how I cosplayed for like the first two years was just never wearing wigs and only doing redhead characters. Um, so that was one of them. I also did the White Mage from Final Fantasy 1 and Rifia from Final Fantasy 3. Yeah, Final Fantasy 3, the DS version. Um, also redheads. <laughs> so those were like my, technically my first costumes that I made. It's usually what I consider them. Zelda Skyloft's first cop was Arwen. That's awesome. I still want to do that one, as I talked about last time. Tinkerbell. Team Rocket Grunt. Oh, you know what? Technically, I did that one too. I didn't have to make any of the pieces, which is why I don't consider it among like my earliest cosplays, because that was all just like straight up purchased items. Although I did put the R on the shirt. I did that. I like did an applique and sat and stitched around the edges. And that was my, or it was just like a zigzag stitch. But that was my first, one of my first costumes. Okay, Bouncy Creeper has, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Specified that for them, art, flock, art block doesn't mean one specific thing. Usually I draw a blank and can't think of anything good for a beginner like me to do. Um, yeah, it's tough when you feel like you uh, don't have the skills to do something more complex, but I usually am in the mindset of being like, we'll just go for it. <laughs> Even if you're like, oh, I'm a beginner, I don't know how to do this, just start researching and start following people. For me, I tend to have the opposite problem where I have too many ideas and too many things that I want to work on and wish, wish that I could make, especially in terms of like what costumes to make. Um, so that's why I'm like, art block, how could you, how could you want to make something and not know what to do? But I mean, different experiences, obviously. Um, so for me, it's always, too many ideas and not enough time or energy <laughs> or hours in the day or money <laughs> all of those things a chew pineapple says i feel like it's a lot easier to cosplay these days because there are so many resources online and that is definitely true. Um, when I started cosplaying, it was kind of around the time that cosplay was starting to slowly become more like mainstream and accessible. Um, I would say now it definitely is. There are lots of places, uh, Taobao or other online sellers where you can just purchase fully made cost custom costumes that are actually pretty good quality. Um, I feel like even just a few years ago, a lot of the costume options for like pre-made stuff was just really poor quality. And so um, it's been, there's been huge advancements even in the last few years of just like better made, um, more high quality options existing out there. And also, um, you know, if you are making your own costumes, what do I want? Here's what I want. If you are making your own costumes, there's just so many more tutorials available compared to what there used to be. Um, now almost anything that you want to do, someone else has done something similar and can walk you through it. Um, if you're dedicated to finding all that information and the right stuff. All right, I'm just kind of removing all of this stuff because it makes me feel better. <laughs> this is the back panel that I'm working on now. Um, so in my original pattern, the pattern that I used to start with, the simplicity pattern, the back was all one piece. There was not a center back seam. But in Zelda's costume, there is pretty clearly a center back seam where you can see a, like a line in the drawing. Plus there's a center split. So I wanted to make sure that, that has a nice seam to kind of all, um, to very like kind of neatly become a part of the same line. So I'm going to use my ruler to make sure this is continuous. I created some like darts and, um, well yeah, I guess they're both just like some long darts to help shape the back. And this is going to become my seam line as well. <laughs> Melinda says back in my day, pre-made costumes were only made from costume satin. 
Yeah. I kind of started cosplaying right in like the tail end of that era. Um, and I've heard all the horror stories about like how few wigs were available before Arda and before similar companies existed. Um, just the wig options being very, very limited and mostly terrible. Um, and now it's like there's whole businesses that exist like solely with like the cosplay community as their market. Um, and you know, they sell to other people too, but like cosplayers now being like a target audience for different businesses. Like with Joanne having a cosplay fabrics line, um, that's really, really cool. <laughs> we just came in two shades of blue. Bright blue and brighter blue. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take my marker and once again just like make sure that my uh, line is hitting both sides of the seam uh, or the dart so that I have a nice clean mark that shows exactly where everything is going to be. Although realistically, I can just cut very neatly down this line with my scissors, and that's probably what I'll do. Yeah, Joanne's, um, a lot of the pattern companies, Simplicity and McCall's both have started catering to cosplayers. Um, there's the fabric line, the Yaya fabrics, uh, cosplay fabrics, um, stuff like that. A lot of, I think we're finally at the point where companies are acknowledging that cosplay is a market that's worth getting into. And I hope that it stays that way and only makes things more accessible because it's a, I would say easier to get into cosplay now than it ever has been in terms of like quickly learning skills and, um, you know, like quickly advancing and being able to do more complex stuff. Just the resources that exist now are pretty amazing. Um, and places like YouTube are just treasure troves of everything. So yeah, I'm just straight up cutting this. I also, I need to mark a mark on this one too to add a seam allowance, which I will do now. To this side only. So I like to always write this on the the piece just for like my own records because as you can see looking at this one there's a seam allowance here there's a seam allowance here but it's missing the seam allowance here because it it was one piece it's now going to become two pieces um so i like to always make a visual indication on the fabric itself just to remind me because depending on what your project is and where the existing seams are and where the new seams need to be like sometimes it's really odd um and hard to remember where you need to add seam allowances and where you don't so in for the sake of being thorough i like to always include that information directly on the mock-up or on the fabric itself um so that i have a a reference So now I have my half of the back, all is one piece, and that's it. My mock-up has been destroyed, it is now gone, um, but instead I have a fabric pattern. Oh, I still need to take this other half of the zipper out because I'm going to put this actual this zipper in my actual coat. Um, but this fabric is now a pattern for me. And if for whatever reason the other half gets, like the, the part that I just disassembled gets messed up or I cut the wrong thing or mark the wrong thing or whatever, I still have another half of this. It's all assembled together that I could quickly um, uh, reference this or, or use it if 
Worst case scenario, I have to scrap the other side for some reason, but I don't foresee that happening. It's just, it's always nice to have that contingency plan. Ooh, Bouncy Creeper says they're gonna start try cosplaying a black mage. That sounds like a really great cosplay project. I love black mages, they're so cute. Um, of cool designs. Does anyone know a good cos a good place to find cosplay for kids? My little sister wants to be characters like Pearl from Splatoon 2 and Circus Baby, but I can't find any sites that have children's sizes. Um, Leafy on is asking. I honestly don't know. Um, I, the cosplay community is mostly adults or like young adults, like teenagers at least, um, because generally they have to make their own costumes or put their own costumes together with whatever resources they have. Um, so I don't know, like you might have to commission that, like to ask somebody who makes costumes um, as a business might be able to make that for you, but. I don't know of any particular sources off the top of my head. If anybody else has um, an answer, please help Leafy on out here in the chat. Triforce Master is heading out for the night. Well, thanks for chilling with us. So my plan for the rest of the stream, however long I end up going is, um, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna liberate my zipper and get this out of here. And then I'm gonna start in the boots. So as someone mentioned, you can see boots behind me, which boop, there they are on my table back there. Um, I'll show those off here in a minute alongside some of my other supplies that came in. But um, yeah, those are, for Zelda, and I'll show you why I made that choice, because it's, it wasn't my first instinct to buy white boots. My first instinct was to buy brown boots, and the more I thought about it, um, the soles of her boots are white, and I'll show you the reference image where you can see that. She's basically got snow boots that have like a white, um, white bottom area and white soles. And it's much, much easier to change the like the top part of the shoe than it is the bottom part of the shoe. It's hard to paint soles and have them have any color stick to them because it's rubber and it's flexible. Well, usually it's rubber, it depends on what the, the shoe is made out of, but a lot of the time it's a rubber material. And um, that can be extremely difficult to paint and have it stay. Like if you're painting the bottom of a shoe, your regular Angelus or shoe paint just won't cut it um, because it's gonna wear off because you're walking on it. Um, and Angelus makes a particular shoe paint called Walk On, which is designed to be walked on, but they only have it in two colors. So unless you want red or black, um, it's not gonna be useful. So with that in mind, I was like, okay, I'll just start with the white boots. Well, now that I've got my, my area is a little more clean, I can show you. She has white soles, and right here you can see it too, where it's like a snow boot where the whole bottom area is white and then the top part of it is brown. So it's much, much easier for me to make a solid white boot brown on the top than it is for me to make a solid brown boot white on the bottom. And that's why I bought white rubber boots. And what we're gonna do with that is make a shoe cover or boot cover that um, to create like a new top shaft area for the boot to make it look like a leather boot. Well, the, the top part of it will be leather, but you know, the rest of it will just be the white rubber. Saturn Galleon, hello. How often do I stream? Uh, right now I'm streaming twice a week. I stream on Wednesday nights and uh, Saturday afternoons. I'm um, in Pacific time on the west coast of the United States. So that's, that's where I am in my time zone. But um, 
I keep meaning to add like a third weekly stream. We'll see if I'm up for it. I'm gonna be busy for the next few days, I think. What am I doing tomorrow? I guess I could stream tomorrow. I have stuff on Friday. I could stream tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe if you guys peer pressure me into it. <laughs> well, thank you, William of the Rune Keepers, who said that my attention to detail will never feel, fail to amaze. I appreciate that. I try my best. But you know, it's just uh, a lot of trial and error and trying things. Uh, KZ is NBK is asking, I'm a little curious why you went through the trouble of installing a zipper and a mock-up. I mean, it's two seams. <laughs> um, I needed to make sure that it would fit me the right way. And if you're trying to um, make your mock-up that has no like real closure, um, it's hard to really fine tune the fit on that. Yeah, you can wrap it around you, you can kind of hold it, but especially with a, a closure that's this long, it's like the whole front of my torso. Um, then like it's gonna be gaping in weird places. Just putting the zipper in it just allowed me more control and that I knew exactly how it was gonna close. And I knew exactly how the fabric around the closure and around the rest of the garment was gonna fit and behave. So that's why I put a zipper in it. Um, and yeah, I did a little bit of extra sewing because I put this unnecessary strip on it that I thought I was gonna end up needing. And then I didn't, um, but that's, Part of the, also part of the beauty of the mock-up is that I figured out that I didn't need that piece on the mock-up itself. And I didn't have to go through the trouble of putting something together for the final version that ends up being unnecessary because I already figured out it was unnecessary on my mock-up. So that's why I did the, the, um, the closure out of the zipper. Yeah, Angela's paint is absolutely great for boots. It's just not really great for the soles of boots. Um, it's certainly better than other alternatives because it is flexible and it is really useful for any for almost any situation where you need to paint something that's flexible. But just specifically talking about the very bottom, the underside, um, very few products can withstand the pressure of being just straight up walked on. So that's why. They, like I said, they do have um, a line of paints. Well, it's two paints, it's black and red, that are called Walk On, Walk On Black and Walk On Red, and those are designed to withstand um, being walked on. But their other paints generally won't hold up on the sole of a boot, even though they will hold up everywhere else. So they're still really good and useful products. Silver Jag recently followed. I'm glad that you find this pleasant and thank you. I'm glad that I can help to help you learn anything about cosplay. Thanks for coming by and hanging out with us in the stream. Oh, MP Lafie liked my squid shoes stream. Well, thank you. That was actually one of the projects that taught me like you really shouldn't paint soles unless you absolutely have no other choice. Cause I had a white sole that I painted black for that and I regretted it. <laughs> I guess I should have got some walk-on black paint, but I just, I didn't have time because I made that costume so quickly. Yes, this is the design that I am making and I'm very excited to have it all go to come together. Abby's heading to bed, Abba Vivial, uh, via Vi, Ab uh, whatever, you know, I try. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the stream, have a good night. Yeah, Lumiere is another really great brand. Uh, the Scarlet Moth mentioned. Um, I think they have a lot of metallic. I think that's what the Lumiere line is, is metallic paints that are flexible, similar to the Angelus. KZ's NBK says, I'm always tempted to just say, hey, I'm good enough, I can just do this, but I found that making the mock-up saves time in the long run. I agree. Yeah, that's why I'm willing to go through and put the little, the little extra effort in, like putting the zipper, putting in whatever other details is just, just figure it out on your rough draft and then you know that you're set when you're ready to do your final one. Okay, um, so I, now it's show and tell time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have all of my costume set parts set aside here. I'm not gonna take apart the cape yet. I want to put the coat together and then put the cape mock-up back on on top and make sure it's the right size 
Um, and if I need to make any adjustments, then I'll know. But, um, so I'll kind of be working on this one piece at a time. <sighs> Boop. All right, now it's show and tell time. This is the shiny gold heat transfer vinyl. This was a wish list item from a stream like I think one week ago. Um, somebody here in the chat or in the stream got this item off my wish list, uh, which is awesome. And basically, all of these little like filigree designs and stuff on the front, well, mostly the cape and like kind of the bottom and sides, all of that is going to be done with this heat, trans heat transfer vinyl. Um, I have a machine called the Silhouette, Silhouette Cameo that will automatically cut things for me. And that's going to be really helpful for um, all of those tiny details. Delta of Skyloft is heading out. Well, thank you for stopping by and coming to the stream. Uh, someone asking me where did I get the press locks for Zelda's coat? Bouncy Creeper wanted to know. Those are these things, which... That looks pretty good together. Those are like very similar tones. Um, these came from Etsy. Um, I have like a cat hair on my face. Sorry, I'm like grabbing my nose. Um, these came from an Etsy seller called Lace Crafted, which they sell a lot of um, hardware and stuff for leather work. Basically, these guys have like two tabs in the back, and the pop the, this pops off. So this um, and there's also like a metal frame piece. So um, you punch two holes in your fabric, feed these through, pop one of these on, and then lock the tabs down around it. And that's, so they're really easy to install like that. And then I have a little lock, um, which looks like the ones on the front here. So I'm really excited for that. So here's some, some show and tell items for, yeah, things I recently received. Oh, Lori is also heading out, Lori34. Thank you very much, and good luck to everyone here in the chat as well. Have a good night. Uh, Waffles is asking if we were at Pack South. No, we are not at Pack South. Here is my super white fabric. Um, and I have a, a swatch too that I'm gonna grab. I think I showed this off in the last stream. This is the um, fake beaver fur from Mood Fabrics, where it's really soft and kind of luxurious looking. These items are so white that the camera can't even like pick it up because it just looks like a blur. I guess it looks more blue in this light, but still. Um, so I think that's a really good match in terms of like whiteness and white balance. These two would definitely work well together. So if I don't find a fur that's more fluffy and sheep-like, which is what I'm hoping to find because it's she's got this like. I don't know, fluffy lamb kind of look to it. So I have this one, this will be my backup. And this one I can order from Mood and I know that it's in stock and all of that. Um, so I have a solution in mind, but I still wanna see if I can find one that's uh, more, more wooly. And then this is my actual coat fabric. It's really thick, um, it's 1.5 millimeters, which is pretty thick. And it looks like the edges don't really fray, maybe a tiny bit, but that's gonna be really nice to work with. And it's got this like soft kind of felt texture. Um, holy cat hair attracting fabric Batman. <laughs> Says cat cosplay, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it in the bag so the areas doesn't lay on this until the end. Oh, hello Travelsome, welcome. Is there any super white shearling I could find for the fur trim? I've looked, but all the shearling I found is like very yellow, like cream colored, because that's what it looks like naturally. And so even the artificial shearling tries to like mimic the, the natural shearling and they apparently just make it all yellow instead of um, actually white. So yeah, put that stuff away. And now shoes, shoes is what we have next on our agenda. Cool, I've made it through so much of my checklist tonight. That's exciting. Um, so I have two things. I talked a bit about why I chose white shoes is because she has white soles. 
Um, and so this is as close as I can find. It technically has like a gray soul, but oh well. Don't tell anyone, okay guys? Uh, <laughs> so this is my base boot for um, making a shoe that hopefully looks like this. So what I'm going to be doing is creating the tops of the boots um, and creating a shaft that will just cover like from here, I guess it starts a little lower, like around there. And I'll, I'll create a mock-up first to test it and all that. I also might end up cutting the cutting this base boot like here or so because I want the, the ankle to be a little bit narrower. This one's kind of baggy. So if I can cut it and then have that seam covered by the, the boot cover, then that would be ideal. But anyway, um, I got these shoes on Amazon if anyone's looking for them. They were like 50 bucks, which is a little bit more on the high end of what I'm willing to pay for cosplay shoes, but they were the best one I could find. So, you know, that's sometimes you just gotta, if you want that specific item, you just gotta shell out for it sometimes. Do I keep a list of materials that complement one another? Um, I buy them strategically in a certain order based on what is easiest to find. Like for instance, I bought my white fabric and then I wanted to make sure that the fur matched it. So I still haven't bought the fur because I was waiting for the fabric to arrive so that I could take a sample in with me um, to a fabric store and compare them. So I do kind of um, break things down, usually just in my head and kind of um, create a plan of attack where I can, I'll search for whatever items are like the hardest to find or whatever I think like needs to be like the cornerstone of the outfit, like the main fabric, and then base my other color tones and other material choices around that. So there is um, definitely a method to picking things um, in a certain order. <laughs> Shia says, damn dude, if the snow around here sticks around, you're gonna glow at Katsu. That's the goal. <laughs> um, I'm really hoping that it does snow at Katsu this year, because sometimes it does. Um, and if it does, then it'll be perfect for snow picks. And if it doesn't, then I can just go up a mountain here in Washington or something, and I'll find some snow. <laughs> All right, let me grab some water, because I'm thirsty. I'm a thirsty girl. I've been talking a lot during the stream. Okay, so here is a different rain boot. <laughs> um, the reason I got this one out is because I'm gonna use this one to make my pattern. Um, as you can see, the boots that I bought for Zelda are short because they were cheaper than the tall boots that are also white. And since I only need the bottom to be white and I'm adding my own boot cover, I just thought, hey, you know what, whatever, I can buy a shorter boot. Um, so there is there is a height difference here and I'm gonna use this darker colored one as my pattern. Um, and I will be making a mock-up so I can make my uh, boot cover mock-up, put it on the other shoe, make sure that they match, uh, make any adjustments that I need to so that I know they fit together. But um, yeah, this is why I'm doing it that way. Tough Tink, thank you for thanking me for streaming. Uh, I guess maybe you're heading out for the night. If so, have a good one. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to start putting my pattern together, which is going to be based on this boot. Um, the things I need to make that happen are some tape. I actually got this stuff ready, guys. <laughs> some tape and some saran wrap. And now we will be doing ye old saran wrap uh, pattern method, which I feel like this has just been done to death in tutorials and stuff, but if you haven't seen it before, this is one of the most useful things you can learn for pattern making. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab some like just random fabric and I'm going to stuff it inside this boot because right now it's floppy. And uh, so I want this to have some shape and form so it's not just collapsing. So I'm just going to stuff it with some, some extra fabric.
Okay, I'm back. I just grabbed some random stuff from my closet. Well, Syncrophy is here. Welcome. Are oh, you gonna be at Fanime? I would love to be at Fanime, but I did not sign up for the whole hotel room lottery yet, so who knows if I can still make it to Fanime. Gaming Orchard says, I follow your husband, might as well follow you too. Well, thanks. <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah, you know what? We do very different things, but sometimes our um, stuff is able to line up. Scarlet Moth is asking, why are so many American conventions held in hotels? Well, a lot of them are held in convention centers, but people travel to them, so you have to get your, your hotel plans in order to go. So like Fanime is held in a convention center and there's a bunch of hotels around it in the area. So, um, you know, that's fine. It, but the convention itself does happen inside a convention center. Um, and now some of them are just really nice hotels. Yeah, like Shia just said, we got some luxury ass hotels out here and that is true. The Gaylord or Katsu is held is amazing, and Shia is correct. Um, the Gaylord is like a resort hotel, and that's where I'm going to be going for um, KatsuCon. And the environment is just gorgeous because it's all designed to be a super luxury hotel place. So um, <laughs> you always laugh at the Gaylord, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. That's one of the reasons, because we have nice hotels, so, you know. Oh, hey, whale facts. Welcome. Yeah, a lot of hotels also have convention-type spaces, so cons not big enough to rent a con center, use a hotel. Says Strike Red Kite, and that is entirely correct. That a lot of them are just, like, smaller events, um, don't need a whole convention center, depending on the city, depending on the attendance. So, a lot of them are held in hotels. Okay, so I am just gonna start layering some saran wrap and I barely got enough to go around. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap this bitch in plastic. <laughs> Fun fact, Fanime used to be held at a community college once upon a time. I believe it. A lot of cons start in like colleges. I think MomoCon was another previously used to be a college con. Okay. I'm gonna need some more to go around, but I'm gonna start with just taping this off. So my goal here is to just cover this entire shoe, um, first in saran wrap and then in tape. The saran wrap um, just protects the surface of the shoe from the tape and makes it easier to remove. I could technically just tape directly on the shoe. It's really not gonna hurt the shoe at all. Um, it'll just be more of a pain in the ass to get off. So the saran wrap creates a kind of temporary covering and then the tape creates a surface that we can mark on. So that's what's happening here. Well, this has some details that I'm just gonna try to cover and if that doesn't work out, then I'll, I'll smooth it out once I get to my mock-up stages. Don't worry. We'll, we'll smooth it out when it's a mock-up. Drag saw's back. What did you miss? Well, I finished taking apart my coat mock-up, and now we are making a pattern for boots. And I talked a little bit about my methods um, and what I have planned, but basically, this is a different boot that I'm not going to be wearing a Zelda that is similar in um, the style and shape and the needs that my that I have for these, my boot needs. <laughs> Piano Semi is heading out going to bed. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you could come to the stream. And Whalefax is just here. A balcony room at Katsukon is a dream, says Always. And yes, I totally agree. Um, I got one, I was lucky enough to get one a couple years ago, and I have not been able to repeat that over the last few years. Um, even signing up for hotels as early as possible, I just end up missing out on them for whatever reason. But it was really nice the one year that I filmed a vlog because I got to stand out on the balcony and film and get like kind of a view of the whole atrium, which was really pretty. 
Uh, Alley Cat Cosplay says we met at Momocon two years back. That is awesome. Yeah, I love Momocon. Momocon is a really fun con. Um, it happens at the same time as Fanime, unfortunately. So last year I was at Fanime, and I also really enjoyed that one. But both of those, good cons. Okay, so I'm just kind of putting a couple of pieces of tape over the edges of the saran wrap to kind of hold everything together, and then we're going to do a solid layer of tape over the whole shoe. And my tape is like coming off in weird little pieces and I hate it. Do you think I'll be going to Akon this year? I would love to go to Akon. I still have to get my plans in place for that, but Akon is the kind of con that I want to go to every year if I can. We'll see about that. My saran wrap got stuck together, which is a hazard of the job, unfortunately. So saran wrap doesn't really stick to very much, but it does stick to itself. So when in doubt, just like wrap it around in such a way so that it creates its own, that it like seals itself off. And then you can continue to use tape to like mush everything down so that you get the, the contours that you're looking for. Anna's heading out because the phone's gonna die. Thanks for coming by, Anna. We'll see you next time. Got snagged on my shirt. Ignore my, I missed a question, sorry. Uh, Largo is asking, how do we make the saran wrap work for you? I mean, I'm doing it just by doing what I'm doing right now. I don't, I don't know, do you have a, a more specific question? Like it's a, just a little bit of trial and error. And like I said, like even though this piece isn't attached very well, I'm just gonna throw some tape right on the edges and then we'll go back and cover everything to make it nice and neat and even. So I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just worried about getting it attached enough that I can begin adding tape everywhere. So this is gonna need one last piece of saran wrap probably. Sorry, if I, if I missed anybody else's question, feel free to post it again. Sometimes um, things kinda move quickly and I don't see everything, but. I don't intentionally mean to ignore anyone, so feel free to keep yelling at me if you need to. <laughs> also, um, as always, if you are trying to ask a question to me specifically rather than just chatting in general with everybody else, uh, tag my name, um, do like at Atelier Heidi, and then it'll be highlighted for me. And it's easier to read, so FYI. Oh yeah, I, Bouncy Creeper is saying I should add a, a, a picture right below here. Um, the reason why there's nothing in that spot is because that's where the uh, Twitch emotes show up. I could move them though. I could put the emotes like on the screen itself. Um, so that's definitely something I'll consider. I had a reference image up on my previous stream like uh, overlay, but I wanted to change some things around. I'm I still feel like I could fine tune this quite a bit more. I just need to sit down and do that. Okay. Uh... Oh, I missed a whale fact. I'm gonna just scroll back up. Sorry, whale facts has a, a whale fact for us saying amber grease. Amber grease is a waxy lump made in sperm whales that is common in the production of perfume. That is a very interesting whale fact. Thank you. And it's crazy expensive. Witchy Char, Char says, Hello, Heidi. I'm so glad you're streaming again. I'm finally getting around to watching you live. Well, thank you. I'm glad. Welcome. Oh, hey, it's Char. Okay, yes. Yes, this is, hey, it's Char. Char, right? It's Char as in, like, Charlie. Is that correct? 
or yeah, you can correct me if, if you need to. Well, thank you, Char. Glad to see you back. And I'm glad that you enjoy it. KZ is heading out. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you, oh, going to do their own stream. Well, enjoy your stream. I hope that you have a good one. And thank you very much. Dark Floof Bun is also leaving. Thank you, Dark Floof Bun, for hanging out with us. We'll be have a good night. What's a good way to mimic a super detailed embroidery? Just stencil on paint. Uh, that could definitely work. There are a lot of different approaches you could take for that. Uh, depending on what kind of um, style you want the whole thing to have. I'm going to put some tape on the bottom of this too. <laughs> yeah, cling wrap is just a big pain in the ass. Oh, hey! Uh, Afro Eccentrics is here saying hey. She's been knitting and um, lurking here. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad that you came by. I'm, I miss you. I hope that you're doing well. <laughs> and thank you very much. I'm glad that I'm streaming and doing a lot better again. Witchy Char, yes. Okay, Charlie is the name. I'm gonna remember that and not call you Char because I know I did that for a long time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Scarlet Moth has an idea saying if you're trying to mimic embroidery, you can do the iron-on trims. That's sort of what I'm doing. Like the, um, this gold stuff that I got. I have a machine that I'm going to cut this out with, but you could definitely cut it out with hand, by hand. Like, I'm, I'm going to use my silhouette because I have one, um, and because I need to make four different um, versions of the same decal, like I need to have uh, two different sizes, but basically they all match. Um, so even if I didn't have that, if I only wanted to make one or two of something, I could draw on this and then cut it out by hand and do it that way. So that's an option um, for one way to put designs on your costume, depending on what the design is and what kind of style you're going for. Oh, cat cosplay is another good idea. I've seen this tutorial too, but um, you can like draw a design and then use puff paint um, to create like a raised design and then embroider on top of that. Because then it's easy to follow the pattern and it creates um, some, what's the word, some dimension. It's like, it stands up. Leonovid is lurking. That's fine. Enjoy. Please, everybody make your own art. Um, that's what I like to do when I watch streams is just have the stream on kind of in the background while I'm sewing or doing whatever. So I've moved on to the point now where I'm doing a total tape layer, and my goal here is to make the pieces lay as flat as possible. So whether I need to tear them to smaller pieces or fold them or do whatever is necessary to achieve that, um, that's what I'm doing. Because you don't want it to bunch up too much. It's okay if it bunches a little bit, but in general you're trying to make something that's like a flat covering. I love that there's so many crafty people that hang out here and can answer each other's questions because I don't always have the answers. I can do certain things, but I don't always know. Um, and sometimes the ideas that I have are like way overly complicated and somebody else will have like a much simpler idea for achieving um, kind of a similar result. So. It's good to consider a lot of different options or maybe ask multiple people if you are feeling stuck on how to do something because you're going to get different responses from different people with different experiences um, and you can kind of pick and choose what you think is a good option for you and your resources and your experience. Oh, thank you. Um, Danielle JW uh, says they came from Pro Jared's channel and they love my work and it's the first stream here. Thank you very much. I'm always happy to hear that. Um, yeah, and it's awesome when people enjoy both Jared's stuff and mine because they are very, very different, but um, kind of related. 
kind of in a similar community. A strange cup of tea is looking forward to seeing the vinyl cutter in action. Um, cool, yeah. I don't know, well I'm gonna try to do at least some of that on stream if I can, even if I have to cut the decals ahead of time and just like iron them on on the stream. Um, I'll do that if I can, so. <laughs> there we go, we're a good, good way of the ways around here. Now I think that I need to make my cover even taller. I haven't gone all the way to the top yet, but we'll, we'll get there. We will address this. That cosplay is another good tip for us, saying that puff paint is an amazing way to fill tiny gaps in foam as well as depending on how you're treating it. Um, that's a cool option. I have used uh, caulking for that that purpose, um, but it can get a little bit messy, so I wonder if puff paint might be a little bit easier to work with. Yes, and now we mummify the boots. That's the stage that we're on. So a good principle of pattern making is that if you're trying to make a pattern for um, a three-dimensional curved form, which is what we're doing, we're trying to make a boot cover, uh, is to find a similar shape and wrap it in whatever, and then um, you will have a pretty good representation of the surface area that you can then fine tune. So. You can do this with tape and saran wrap, you can do it with foil, you can do it with um, other similar products. But this is kind of the general principle behind a lot of pattern making, and really the same thing with the sewing and the mock-up that I made. Um, using my body as the form and creating a layer, an exterior layer that, that fits as well as I can. Printing paste that puffs up when you heat set it. I'm not familiar with that. Um, the vinyl that I have here on the roll has um, adhesive, well, it's a iron-on, it's heat transfer vinyl. So um, I haven't used this particular brand or stuff before, so I'm going to have to test it out, but I have good, uh, a good feeling about that. <laughs> it's like right in the way of my camera. I like this camera setup. I've got like a little desk with a hutch and the camera is just hanging from it. I wish I could get a wider angle of view. Like I wish that this were higher up and it showed more of my surface, but I'm working with what I have and it seems to work pretty well. Grab my scissors now. If you're new to crafting, you'll notice I have fabric scissors, which are nice and shiny and metal. And I also have craft scissors, so these should never be interchanged. Fabric scissors are for fabric only, and craft scissors are for basically anything else. We've got a couple more cosplay related questions here in the chat. If you guys could be so kind as to give each other some answers while I finish this up. Um, well, always nice to be happy to see people sharing experiences and helping each other. I'm doing a slip-on um, boot cover, yes. So that was one of the other things that, that attracted me to using this particular boot as a pattern, is that the ankle area is fairly narrow, but it's still a slip-on. There's no zipper and there's no um, 
Velcro or what, any other type of closure like at the bottom. So I know for a fact that my, um, my foot can easily slip into a boot of this exact size and still be pretty snug. So it's probably about as, as um, form fitting as I can get without um, having to put some kind of zipper or other closure in there. So that's one of the reasons why I was like, yes, this boot will be perfect for making a cover. Um, what I cover the pair of boots you're using in this way and drape based on this is a uh, Femme Ivoire is asking me. Uh, yeah, more or less. It's not quite draping because um, this is a pattern making technique that I'm using instead of draping, basically. Because, yeah, draping would be to um, create an exterior form that you use as a guide, which is exactly what the tape is doing. It's the, pur the purpose that the tape is serving for us here. So yeah, this, I'll show you. If you just keep watching, you'll see exactly what my plan is. But basically, I'm gonna draw my new seam lines on this, and I'm gonna cut it apart, and then I'm gonna make a fabric mock-up out of canvas exactly the same way as I did with um, the mock-up of the coat that I was showing you guys earlier. No! Whale fact saying, my mom used my fabric scissors to cut pizza? That is a horror story if I have ever heard one. What the hell? Like, I've heard of people using fabric scissors to, like, cut wire or something. And yes, the fabric, um, fabric scissors are particularly sharp because they have to be to get through, um, like, thread and, and fine fabrics and things. So that's why you don't want to use them on other materials because it will dull them very quickly. And so, I've never heard of anybody using them on pizza before, that's insane! <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yes, the fabric scissors do get sharpened, Femi Voir is asking. Um, I have like, a little guy, I'll show you my little guy. Right down here, I think. Wrong, wrong drawer. Here it is. This is a little, um, it's got like a little sharpening stone on the inside and you just slide your scissors through it. I got this at Joanne. So that's what I use to sharpen my scissors. Um, or you can get them professionally sharpened certain places if you find somebody who does it, um, like for a flat rate. Of all, of all things to use your fabric scissors for, she used it to cut pizza? Like food? Okay, I would not cut anything that I was planning to eat with any sort of like random craft item from my house, period. Craft scissors or uh, fabric scissors. Fabric scissors is worse, but even craft scissors is bad. Like you should at least use a knife. Use something from the kitchen that you can like wash normally. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's, I think that takes the cake for like worst thing I've ever heard of someone using fabric scissors on. So, my condolences. You see utility knives used to cut pizza? Yeah, I mean, you use what you have to use, but for the love of God, wash it first. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. It just like broke my brain. Yeah, it called me old fashioned, but I also use a pizza cutter to cut my pizzas. All right, now I'm gonna cover this toe area a little bit more. I can move my saran wrap out of the way. Okay, so I've kind of got it bunching up a little bit here, so I'm gonna try to like fold it down and smush it with this other tape that I'm using. You want to try to have like a relatively wrinkle-free surface. It doesn't have to be flawless. You just want to be able to mash it flat for your pattern. You know, just give it a good old mash. Uh, 
technical approach. Hello, Filamentis, welcome. We were just uh, sharing horror stories about people using fabric scissors on pizza. So yeah, I'm trying to pull the saran wrap to be a little bit tighter as well, just to give us um, the best representation of this shoe shape as I can get. It doesn't have to be flawless, it just needs to be close um, so that I can use it to get information about how large the mock-up needs to be. Okay, so Zelda's boots, or the boot cover that I'm trying to make is not gonna go all the way to the toe or all the way to the sides. I'm gonna put a little bit more on this side um, and probably a little bit more at the top. Can I get Jared to draw me in Mario Paint? I don't know if he's still doing that series. I think he finished it, but I should I should ask him, be like, bro, where's my uh, Mario Paint portrait? For the few, I've only seen the episodes that he's posted. Like I've, I've actually pulled them up and watched them and I don't usually watch all of his videos, but I pulled those up because I wanted to see the drawings specifically. And I was actually surprised because um, he's not an artist. I mean, he doesn't consider himself an artist or, or draw any kind of regularly. But I was surprised by how um, detailed and accurate some of his drawings were of his friends. So I thought that was pretty cute. All right, so that, I don't really need that. There's some wrinkles there, but that's fine. Okay. Oh, and the last thing is to cover up this back area here. Now, you can use multiple layers of tape if you want to be, like, really thorough, but I don't want to be. <laughs> I want to keep moving, so I'm just going to do one. Oh, Jared's here in the chat saying, stop, they're not good. They were good. Um, I especially liked your rendition of the Beard Bros. I felt like Alex Fasciani. You just really nailed, nailed his look. Um, so yeah, I would love to request a custom portrait from you, my love. Alright, sorry, I'll, I swear I'll put my work back in view here momentarily. So like I said, these base boots that I'm using have like a buckle in the back and I'm just kind of smoothing over it as best that I can. Um, I will, when I make my mock-up, I will use that as an opportunity to refine those shapes and make sure that it's really as smooth as it can be um, so that the, the buckle won't really be in the way of uh, my progress. But that's what I'm up to. Yeah, Scarlet Moth is right. We need a portrait, a, a Mario paint portrait done by Jared of our family of Aries and myself. And Jared, of course. All our loving family. All right. So here we go. Here's my mummified shoe. Um, like I said, I didn't do the whole bottom because I don't need the whole bottom. I just covered all of the areas that I want to draw on for sure. I got that the top is not completely perfect, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, this is, uh, this is what we're doing. So now I'm looking, I can't fit the whole thing on there, but now I'm looking at the top or the front, the front and center of the shoe. I've got it like, uh, up like this and now we'll turn it. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my reference image back over here. Now that I've got my shoe nice and mummified, is <sighs> I'm just gonna go straight for the sharpie on this one. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna get two sharpie colors. I'm gonna get red and blue. So this way I still have a nice opportunity to refine my lines. I'm gonna draw first in blue and then I'm going to draw over it in red when I'm like satisfied with the um, 
lines. <laughs> Sometimes a family is two internet people and a stupidly large cat. That's so accurate. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a center front seam on this, which is going to be as straight as I can make it um, directly down the center of the shoe. which I'm still just drawing a messy line on a three-dimensional object, but I'm gonna do my best to make it, you know, like pretty straight. My line is kind of shaky, I'm over caffeinated, but that definitely is the, the gist of what we're looking for. <laughs> Bouncy Creeper made our family portrait and emotes, all from Jared's chat. Mm. Witchy Char is asking, um, where can you watch Mario Paint? Mario Paint is a Super Nintendo game. It's a really old game, but Jared is playing it on his gameplay channel, so Pro Jared plays on YouTube, and that is where you can go and watch him. Um, he has now done several episodes where he uh, uses basically a program that's about on the level of Microsoft Paint to draw his friends. <laughs> so I'm just continuing my center front seam straight down. Okay, also looking at the bottom of this and how much space I want to give it. So right now I'm making a lot of guesses and I'm just kind of drawing free form. Um, so I'm going to end up doing a lot of cleanup work on this. This is just the initial pattern. The mock-up will be my opportunity to make sure everything is hitting the place that I want it and it is the right size and fitting correctly and all of that. Um, So I don't want to get overly bogged down in trying to make everything perfect on this just initial sketch um, because in a, to a certain degree it can be a waste of time to be like overly invested in making your, your rough drafts perfect. Um, but you want to make sure that you provide yourself enough information to make good decisions about how to adjust. So that's really what it comes down to. It can be as messy or as neat as you would like. Um, as long as you are able to get the information that you need from it. That's my philosophy on mock-ups anyway. Oh, and I missed a spot on the tape. I'm going to grab a little bit more tape. My the back of my heel is not totally done. MP Lafie is heading out for the night. Well, thanks for stopping by. I'm probably not going to go for a lot longer, but I want to get cut some of my basic lines done here. If I could do all of my lines drawing line drawn. If I get all my lines drawn on this, I think that would be nice. A chew pineapple is also heading out. Well, thanks for coming. I'm glad to see you guys here in the chat. I also want to try to make this as horizontal as I can, which Still, I'm just roughing it out. <laughs> okay, so now I have a, a solid horizontal line going, uh, representing the bottom of where my um, boot cover is going to end. So from this side up will all be my boot cover and this part down will be the exposed white part of the shoe. <laughs> Bouncy Creeper, I'm glad that you enjoy the stream.
Saturn Galleon is asking, why don't you do the pre-mock-up, the cast, sorry, I forgot the term, on the boots you're using. I think you said it earlier, but I missed it. I'm not entirely certain what you're asking. Uh, what I'm doing right now is a pattern making technique. Um, so I'm creating a pattern to uh, use as a guide to make a mock-up. So it's like a three-step process usually for me. First the pattern, then the mock-up, then the final version. Um, sometimes there are multiple mock-ups depending on how complex it is or how much adjustments you need. Um, but usually one or two mock-ups or a single mock-up that evolves several times where I like make multiple changes to it. That's usually my system. Um, so now I'm doing my center back seam. It's hard to draw on a lumpy three-dimensional object, but I'm just doing as best as I can to make it pretty straight, and then my rulers will help me clean this up and make it good at the end. So the saran wrap and tape is just a surface for me to draw on and cut apart. And then from here, we refine it as a mock-up and say, okay, now that this has seam allowances and now that it's been stitched together, is it fitting properly? Is it smooth? Is it wrinkling up weirdly in places? And that's where you're able to make those adjustments. So this is like the roughest version and then the mock-up is a slightly more refined version and then maybe the second mock-up if there is one is an even more refined version and then your final copy is um, completely um, refined to all the different changes you want to make. Um, why am I doing the pattern on this shoe and not the ones I'm using on the cosplay? Oh, uh, because of the height difference and because of the width difference. So, um, why am I not using that one is because it needs to be taller than the white boot is and because I would like it to be thinner than the white boot is. So this white boot, I'm most likely going to just cut it right across here and totally discard the top of this boot. But, um, and the reason why is because it's really wide and kind of baggy in the upper part. And so I don't want to just cover it plain. I want to make it sm like the, the shaft of my new boot will be thinner than this one. So this one is a slightly thinner boot, but they are otherwise extremely similar. So I'm making my pattern based on this, put a mock-up on here, um, make sure that they're compatible, make sure that they're fitting properly and that they're, they're kind of seamlessly going together, and then um, making my final version. So I hope that makes sense. And yes, it looks like it does. Cool. Casual Viking heading to bed. Seems like a lot of people are at this time of night. Well, thank you for tuning in and have a lovely evening. It's about 9.30. I've been going for like two and a half hours, so I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, I have my other boot right here. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on pretty quickly and just kind of use it to kind of gauge. There it is. Okay. Because her boots are like angled where it's lower in the front and then it gets higher toward the back. So for me to have a bottom point that starts, these go really high in the back actually. I've got like a chunk of fake hair <laughs> from my wig. <laughs> Egg Buha, thank you, welcome, howdy. Okay, so I think that overall my boot needs to be taller than the one I'm actually using here. So I'm gonna place this like center point only like an inch or so down from the top here. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it will in a moment. <laughs> Manuel is also heading to bed. Sorry for keeping you up late in your time zone. Yeah, I should really start streaming earlier on Wednesdays. I might end up doing that just because I know a lot of people end up staying up really late. <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming this is going to become like my new center point, and I'm going to angle it up from here. So rather than cut a lot off the front, I'm actually just going to add a lot onto the back. Um, so I'm going to worry about that later as I move into like the next stages. But for my own reference, um, let's put 
just like some rough circles here for the um, buttons that are on the front and a figure eight, which is just, ooh. That was really rough. So that kind of, um, kind of estimates the placement of the shape. Okay. Now there's additional seam lines pretty much going all around. Basically, I'm gonna split this area up into two extra seam lines. So I think that where I had them, it was about right. So basically this boot is composed of a bunch of vertical panels that are all kind of moving in the same direction. I'm just using my fingers here to like guide my decision making and kind of get them spaced out. Uh, I mean, it's really just, There's not that much of a method to it. I'm kind of just placing things where I feel like it, but to a certain extent, I am, um, you know, intending to make things kind of uh, line up a certain way. Or I want to have this divided into roughly equal portions, although I'm not using any special uh, measuring tools to get that. I'm just kind of, just kind of going. Here we go. Yeah, the boots get wider near the top. They do, but um, I think that this boot is the correct shape for what I want, more or less. It will it will undergo some changes, but you'll see all of it. All right, there's one. Do I ever do costuming for TV, movies, etc.? No, um, a lot of my friends worked in that field when I was in LA, and it's just really high pressure. Um, my background is in theater, so like that's uh, what I did when I was in college. Um, and so I have some experience working on shows and like building costumes for other people for like theatrical production but I don't think that I would pursue a career in that field just because there's a lot of pressure and difficulty. I mean, I certainly would if I needed to, but currently don't need to, so uh, that's why I haven't yet. All right, I have two more vertical lines to draw and then that's basically gonna be it. So I'm not gonna have a lot more to stream tonight, but I, we've made so much progress tonight. Um, I feel really confident about where we're at. Kind of refining these. I'm kind of like looking at the other side of the shoe and kind of roughing out approximately similar distances. And I can refine all of that a lot more um, once I get to a point where I'm working on mock ups. One more. Uh, what final material am I going to make the boot cover out of? Um, I'm going to use leather. Um, I have a bunch of different leather hides that were given to me um, as a donation by a guy that I met out here uh, after I moved. So I'm thinking that I will most likely be able to find something in that stash that will suit my needs for this, but I haven't, I haven't nailed it down yet but I need to go out to my garage and kind of look through what I've got.
cool. That's my last vertical line. So now I have basically just divided this whole area up into a bunch of different vertical slices. That was like a victory sound. Creepius, thank you so much for subscribing. You got here right in the end of my stream. I'm like ending right now. Uh, I need to go to work in an hour. Oh well, at least you got to, to check it out. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Now am I going to make a second pattern for the other boot? Asks Largo. No, because the boots are symmetrical or they're, they're mirror images of each other. Um, I'm going to mirror the pattern. And so I only need to do it once and then um, make two of them that are mirror images. So that's the plan. That's what I've got going on with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night here at 9.37 in my time. Thank you guys so much for coming to my stream. I'm going to be doing another stream. Saturday for sure. Um, I probably will use tomorrow on my own time and just work off camera because I think I can get a lot done on my pattern by doing that. Um, so that's my goal is I will see you guys on Saturday. Anybody wants to come to the next stream, it's going to be at 1 p.m. Um, Pacific time. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I might be working on the boots. I might be working on the coat. We'll see. I'm just going to kind of play it by ear, but you can check out my Twitter or uh, Instagram if you want to see what I what I am working on in the, the meantime. Anyway, just reading up on the final chat messages. You guys have been great. Thank you all for the support. Thanks for coming. Thanks for chatting. And uh, I will see you next time. Uh, I guess I could look into the camera while I say goodbye. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night, everybody, and I hope that you do something creative with your time. All right. Good night, guys.